Thank you, Sevinj, and thank you, CDP Turkey, for inviting me to speak to you today. Uh, let me first reflect that while organizations such as CDP have been doing a fundamental and absolutely extraordinary work for over two decades, I honestly believe that since the release of the IPCC 1.5 report in October 2018, we have seen a consolidation of science-aligned commitments on climate disclosure, also reporting, and also, of course, action. CDP, of course, has been key in building the foundations of what we understand we understand today as the first elementary step on the road to solving the climate crisis, meaning em environmental impact disclosure, but in turn has served to put in place what I believe is currently the main driver that is moving the global climate agenda and that has allowed to accelerate the activation of the ambition loop in these three la uh, this last uh, three years. I am referring to the role of the financial sector. Let's go back to uh, 2015, when the member states signed the Paris Agreement, in that same moment, they also requested for the IPCC to analyze the temperature goal, as, uh, as well as they also empowered the non-state actors to work towards the, the fulfillment of the agreement. That precise moment was the first activation of the ambition loop. Four years later, in 2019, with the confirmed 1.5 degree target, uh, uh, we are searching for subnational governments, companies, and financial institutions from all around the world that could commit to the 1.5 degree trajectory, meaning, of course, net zero by 2050 at the very latest, as is the base of the Race to Zero campaign that I had the honor to launch with my dear friend Nigel Topping, someone very well known by CDP, and he is now moving the, the agenda forward with the uh, COP27 high-level champion, Dr. Mahmoud Moheldin. For the Secretary General Summit in September 2019, we found 100 companies committed to this concrete goal, net zero by 2050, and therefore aligned with the 1.5 degree. Three months later, almost 800 companies at COP25 in Madrid. Since then, the number has grown to 5,500 companies at COP26 in Glasgow, representing more than 15% of the global GDP by revenue. All of them fully aligned with science and formally committed with the United Nations in a global campaign where, of course, CDP has been a fundamental partner. This has continued to grow in the last four uh, months, drawing a clear exponential curve that expresses the inevitability of the trend. We will soon update the numbers to confirm all of this trajectory. The Race to Zero has a 5P rule. The first one being pledge. You have to pledge formally at the United Nations through different partner initiatives. The second P is plan and plan according to science and validated by science. The third P is proceed towards 2030, accelerate your trajectory. The fourth P is to publish, to be transparent at least once per year on what you're doing. And the fourth P is policies, persuade, therefore act towards the right type of policy and never against it. And all of this acceleration of commitments has happened also in the midst of the pandemic with the economic crisis, with the invasion of Ukraine, with all of the economic uh, situation that we're living. So it's really important to take into consideration that the acceleration is absolutely inevitable. A big number of those companies are also certified B Corporation, B Corps, that have committed to achieve net zero by 2030, doing amazing efforts to adapt their business models and their value chain to achieve that goal. We expect that in every country we are capable of using that capacity to move ahead with the climate commitments and the climate agenda. The private sector is definitely waking up to the tragedy of the climate crisis, following the evidence, following the work of the NGOs, following science, following also the, the voice of the youth, and also following, as I said, the power of money. In the Secretary General Summit in 2019, we were capable of putting together 30 asset owners with $2.4 trillion committed to follow the 1.5 degree trajectory. One year later, in December 2020, that number grew to $13 trillion, including also asset managers. In Glasgow, one year later, the number went to 440 financial institutions with more than $130 trillion, including now banks, uh, insurance companies, and service providers. 
again, an exponential curve. This is the best expression of the ambition loop that now is again in your, in your hands to move from voluntary to regulated. In this moment, we're seeing some great progress in that sense, from the initial days of CDP to now having cases like the UK, where since April 6th this year, over 1,300 of the largest UK registered companies and financial institutions have now to disclose disclosure climate-related financial information on a mandatory basis, in line, of course, with recommendations from the Tax Force on climate-related financial disclosures. This includes many of the UK largest traded companies, banks, and insurers, as well as private companies with over 500 employees and 500 million uh, pounds in turnover. And of course, we had the US Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, that a few weeks ago formally proposed new rules that would be uh, for the first time required for business to report the greenhouse gas emissions along with the uh, details of how climate change is affecting their businesses. Even in my country, in Chile, we're now starting to see the first expression of this with a new rule on ESG disclosure that will be mandatory starting next year. Those are fantastic expressions of the ambition loop, an ambition loop that can not only be about mitigation, must include adaptation, resilience, and climate justice. That is the base of the race to resilience, searching for the need support for the 4 billion people that today are suffering the hardest effects of the climate crisis. And if I try to connect the dots, we all know that the financial sector is increasing their active investment in involvement with, uh, with ESG where the E has been getting stronger and stronger, while the S seems to be missing. The climate agenda has the capacity and should provide some fundamental elements to the ESG trend while requiring solidarity and inclusion to be in the center of every climate action. I honestly believe the private sector has been increasingly understanding that the risk of inaction is so much bigger than any cost related to acting now. And some markets are adjusting really fast, never fast enough, I know, but really fast. For example, former hard to abate, uh, abate sectors like cement have now become possible to abate. We have seen an increasing, uh, an, an amazing increase in numbers of commitments to the race to zero coming from the cement and concrete industry. All of this, not only in scope one and two, but including also scope three and therefore the whole value change. In this aspect, I celebrate CDP's annual supplier engagement rating, the SIR, that provides a rating for how effectively companies engage their suppliers on climate change since 2018. I know that businesses that disclose their environmental data in Turkey had significant progress in suppliers engagement rating this year. That is massive and definitely the way to go in order to solve the crisis. Every single company has to start not only embracing their own internal climate impact, but also uh, getting related and engaging all of their suppliers. With everything that is happening around the world, this is the moment of truth. We need to open more space for the energy transition, for electromobility, for sustainable cities, for green hydrogen and green ammonia, for climate smart agriculture and, and also re regeneration, for public and private partnerships, for circular economy. Of course, always starting with a voluntary commitment, then absolutely be determined to learn, improve and then disclose, and finally, get aligned with the power of money and move from voluntary to regulated. For the private sector, this is a moment of climate accountability and climate solidarity. My understanding as, is that for the governments, this is a moment to keep accelerating the ambition loop. Thank you very much.